Hi, I'm Chris Bailey. I'm a Blender YouTuber at C Bailey Film on YouTube. You can find me there. Today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're gonna be burning stuff down. Let's get started. Now, don't forget to check out cgcookie.com. You can find a ton of amazing resources over there. All right, so welcome to Blender. Now we're gonna make some smoke. So I'll show you, it's a very complicated process. It takes a lot of steps. You click your object. We go up to object. We go down to quick effects. You click quick smoke, boom, and we're done. So thanks so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope you really enjoyed it and you learned a lot of cool stuff. Okay, so, but really, I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm gonna start off and just delete everything. So uh, let's go ahead and hit A and X and we're gonna delete it all. Now the first component that you need to understand for any kind of smoke sim, it's the same as fluid, is you need to have a domain and that's gonna define the region within which your smoke simulation is gonna happen, right? Because your computer is just not strong enough to calculate an infinite space. So first thing we wanna do is we hit Shift A, mesh, and we're gonna create a cube. So I'm gonna scale this thing up on the Z, grab it on the Z, bring it up, here we are. Now, um, it really, it just needs to be a size that will will contain everything. So sometimes it's good as well to go ahead and define what your camera angle is gonna be, right? Because then you know what's gonna be out of frame and you can just like create your domain to fit just within the frame so you don't worry about rendering or simulating stuff that's not gonna be seen. So this is gonna be our domain. I'm gonna rename this cube domain. I'm going to create another object. I'm actually going to switch over to wireframe view. It makes it a little easier to see in this step. Um, and I'm going to shift A, create, uh, now this could be anything, right? Um, I'll create a monkey because, you know, it's there and that's fun. So here we go, we've got our monkey. Now this is going to be the thing that emits smoke. So the next step we need to do is we need to uh, turn smoke on for both these objects. So first let's click our domain and let's come down to the physics tab. Um, and we can have this, uh, we've got this fluid property here we can turn on. So I'm gonna click the fluid button. We're gonna go for domain. It's the same as with a fluid. We can leave the rest of this for now. Uh, all this is set up pretty well for us. Now the next thing is we click our monkey or whatever the object is that you wanna have uh, emitting smoke. And we're gonna come here to the same tab, click fluid, and this object is going to be our flow, right? Because the flow is the object that brings the smoke into your scene. It's where it flows from. Now we have a couple of settings. Uh, we've got the uh, flow type, which we're gonna leave for smoke for now. Flow behavior. Now there's three options here. Geometry basically uses the mesh to create one burst of smoke that then kind of fades away, right? Inflow allows the object to continually emit smoke. And outflow is like a sink. It like sucks the smoke up or take, gets rid of it. it. helps it to leave your scene. So we're gonna switch to inflow. So this uh, monkey will just continually emit smoke into our scene because that's what monkeys do. If you ever watched National Geographic, you know that episode where you see all the monkeys and smoke's like just coming out of them all the time, trying to be funny. Can you, it doesn't work. Let's go back to the beginning of our timeline and you can see immediately we get some kind of result. We get this like shaded area. Um, I can switch over to rendered view and we're not going to see anything yet. But if you go to the flat shaded view as well, you can uh, start to see a little bit better. I might make my world I'm just going to brighten up my background so you can see stuff really clearly. All right. So now if I hit play, you can see we get some smoke that emits and rises up. It's got a nice little plume, hits the top of our domain. You can see how the domain kind of acts like a room that the smoke uh, simulation happens in. When it hits the walls, it begins to react to it. Okay, great. Now, um, we're really not there yet, okay? Because there's some other things to consider. The first thing is, whenever you want to preview your smoke, um, you need to do it in a really stable way. When you're in this mode right here, where we've just added the smoke elements and we're jumping around on our timeline and stuff, it's going to start getting confused. It's going to try and cache the simulation, but it can start giving you weird results. And you're not going to get a consistent idea of what your smoke really looks like. We're going to come over to our physics tab for the domain. And if we scroll right down, you get this little uh, section here for uh, caching the simulation. Now, before you correct me, in Australia, we say cache. I know in America you say cache. I don't know why you say cache, but you do. So just, just take your hands off the keyboard. Don't leave that comment. Just step away. Step away from the computer. Okay. Cool. We've got the frame start and end set for our uh, simulation here. And there's a couple of different types. It's set to replay by default. I find the most stable one to be all. That could be better now in the more recent updates. I haven't gone back and tested this thoroughly in with you know the latest version of Blender, but in the past, the all type has been really the most consistent. And what this is gonna do, if I click bake all, it's gonna create a file on my computer that saves the data um, for this smoke simulation. Now it's just gonna read that data. So now it's a lot easier for me to jump around in my timeline and I get a really smooth playback. Um, it helps me see exactly what's going on. This is important to get the sim right. Now that we've got this set up, you may wonder, okay, uh, 
Now, how do I get some extra detail on this? Because it's not quite looking right. Well, the first thing to know about detail is just like with a fluid sim, this little uh, cube down in the corner of our domain shows us the voxel size. Now, again, remember a voxel is like in Minecraft where you have the world that's generated. Every block is a voxel, and it's it's like a, it's almost like a 3D pixel. That's a good way to think about it. It's a pixel in 3D space. Um, so each block represents one sort of pixel of resolution for our smoke sim in this 3D space. If we make this cube smaller and smaller and smaller, it means we're going to get more detail in our smoke. You can see right here, we get these like really jagged sections, right? So in order to have the detail we want, we need to decrease the size of this cube. So if we come up to our domain, now every time you go and make changes when you're uh, caching, caching is you're going to have to come down and free all. That will get rid of that cache and allow you to make changes. Now resolution divisions, if we change this from 32, we can go to 64 and bam, you can see it's gotten a lot smaller. Now this will take longer for your computer to simulate. Um, so sometimes it's a good idea to keep it set to something low like 32, get your initial settings right, and then crank it way up and run your sim overnight and then have a look at it the next day. Just be careful. It's gonna take up a lot of hard drive space. These uh, sims can take up like gigs of space. So make sure you have enough hard drive um, before you get started. A couple of other things to add some extra detail to your, your smoke is to one, turn on noise. Noise will add in a little extra noise noise to the uh, simulation. So if I if I bake this again, now you can see with noise turned on, we're getting a lot of extra detail. Like it's it's breaking up a lot more. It's curling out. Another thing you can do is you can turn on dissolve. And what dissolve is going to do is it's going to make the smoke disappear over time. It's fading off very quickly, right? It's just disappearing. So this is a good way to create something like steam, you know, that you want to have it to dissipate into the environment very quickly. Okay, so we've got a really cool simulation. Things are looking good. Now, how do we render this? Because if I switch over to EV, for example, you can see it doesn't show up at all. We don't have anything yet. In fact, let me add a light. I'm going to go shift A, light, sun, turn this around a little bit. And it's like, okay, right. We can see Suzanne, but we can't see, we can't see anything else, but it looks great here. Why not? Well, Let's uh, let's figure this out. We're going to come to our domain. Now, what do you do is you add the material to the domain itself. So not the object that's emitting the smoke, but the domain, because the domain becomes the smoke. Think of it that way. It's easier when you're doing a fluid. You can see it actually become the mesh of the fluid, but um, this domain is, is becoming your smoke. So this is what we're going to add our shader to. So I'm going to go to my shader editor. I'm going to click new to create a new shader. I'm going to get rid of my principal BSDF. And I'm going to add a shader principle volume shader. Now, one gotcha that you can run into is if you create it over here, um, you could select the principled volume shader on this side. Where is it at? There it is. It's going to automatically plug things up, but it does it incorrectly. It places, it connects the volume into the surface input, which isn't going to give you any result. If I go back to my render view, you can see we don't see anything still. So you want to stick this into the volume. Okay. That's how you're going to begin to see it. Now, very faint. You can't really tell yet. Let me, I'll change my background as well. So uh, we're similar so you can kind of see. So there we go. So you can see that we've got something uh, rendering here now. All right. Now, a couple of things that are important about smoke. Um, if I move back far enough with my camera, you can see the smoke disappears. And that has something to do with EV. If we come over to uh, EV's render settings and we come down to volumetrics, you can see you have the start and end number. This is basically how, uh, when will you start rendering the smoke and when do you stop? Like how far away do you need to get for the smoke to stop rendering? So hundred meters is what it's currently set to. So when I, and it gets hundred meters away, it's going to just disappear. So if it's still not showing up, come over here and check these settings. You may have them down really low. Another thing is the tile size. Uh, this is going to affect not only the resolution, so the, the, the quality of the simulation, but this actually affects the quality of the render of that simulation. So the smaller these tiles go, the more detail we're going to get in the final render. Uh, now, again, this is just with EV. It's not as important with cycles. Cycles will just render it to its maximum quality. One other setting that's really important in EV is to come over and turn on volumetric shadows. And that will help create even more realism in your smoke because you, it'll begin to cast shadows um, with the, the volume. So you can see if I turn this off, our smoke looks really flat. You can't really see any of its in its definition, but if I turn on volumetric shadows, we're starting to get shadows cast on the smoke itself. Okay, so great, we've got some smoke, but hey, what happens if you want to have fire? Well, thankfully, it's not that much harder. It's uh, just one more step. All we got to do is come back to our emitter object, go down to our fluid settings, 
And where it says flow type, we can just change it from smoke to fire plus smoke. Now, if we come back over to our domain, let's uh, run our sim again. And we don't see any fire, how come? Well, fire is actually, it's a temperature thing and it's in here already, but we just can't see it yet because our shader is not set up to deal with it. So we need to come back over to our principal volume shader and we need to turn on a couple of things. The first thing we wanna do is set our color attribute. Um, we can set this, I find it works really well if you set this attribute to temperature. So if we type in temperature, it will take the temperature of the smoke and because we've made it fire and smoke, it's gonna be hot right down here and it's gonna cool off as it goes off. Now, if I take my color and I give the color a fire color, so something like red or maybe like an orange color, you can see that this bit down here is gonna pick up that color where it's hottest and then it's gonna cool off as it goes. Now, in order to get it to glow, you need to use the black body intensity value. You can see it's set to zero by default. If I turn this up to one, all the way up, it's gonna start getting really hot. If I go to my render settings in Eevee, I can turn on bloom as well. That will help me start to see that really intense glow. Now, the other thing to do is we can actually turn the temperature up. So we'll take the base value that it's already calculated for the temperature and it will increase it. Um, so I can turn this up to like 1500 and now you can see my fire is gonna be so hot, it's gonna kind of glow white. You can see it much better if we go to shader view. You can see how it actually behaves like you would expect fire to behave. Now this looks like a pretty good sim. It looks really nice. Even though we've got really low resolution settings, we haven't really tweaked a lot of values. It's pretty straightforward. So if I wanted to get super high detail with this flame, what I could do is come over to my domain and turn up my resolution. So let me do that. I'll free my bake. I'm gonna turn this all the way up to 128 and let's run this sim and see what it looks like. Okay, so that finally finished. It took a while, like about 10 minutes, uh, to go up to frame 150. Let's have a look at it. So you can see we're getting a lot of nice detail in these flames as they curl around. The smoke itself is looking very nice. Now, if you come over to the render view, you notice it doesn't quite look as good. Well, a lot of that has to do with the render settings. So if I come over here and turn up my samples to maybe 128 and take my tile size down to two, you can see it's starting to pick up a lot of that detail that we originally had. Now, sometimes you can get some weird colors, like uh, you can see here, if I darken my world a little bit, we've got this like greenish tint that's coming through in the rendered version, version with Eevee. And uh, you can get around that by dropping down the brightness of your color for the temperatures, or color for the, uh, the the smoke. So if we drop this down a little bit off of, um, you know, the, the highest point on the brightness, we bring it down to more of like a midway. Um, you can see it looks a lot nicer. Um, you can even get a nicer result if you take your black body intensity past one. So if you turn it up to something like 10, your fire is gonna really start to look quite nice. Sometimes this is a better result than just changing the temperature. So you can see here in cycles, it looks quite nice. I've um, changed my absorption color to be sort of a, a brighter, uh, lighter um, red, tone of the same red. And you can see it really doubles up with the flames as the flames start to get covered by the smoke and it brings out the richness of that color. And it can look really nice if you turn these things up. Now this works with any kind of model. So you can use any geometry and throw on some smoke and fire and bam, you're gonna have a burning object. Like for example, this. So I just took some, uh, I've just found a free 3D model of a um, house structure online, downloaded it, popped it into Blender and stuck a smoke seam just like this one onto it. and turn the fire up and there you go. That's the result. This is rendered out of Eevee um, and uh, not actually that many resolution samples. This is turned down pretty low. This is only 64 samples. So um, if I push this even further, I'd get a much nicer result. And if I rendered it in cycles, it would look even better. Now, in order to get things like the sparks, all I did was put a plane in the scene with a particle system emitting uh, some little emissive glowing cubes. So uh, really simple stuff all working together quite nicely to create some cool effects. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, hit that like button and leave us a comment. Let us know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see coming up in the future. We'd love to hear what you think. Thank you again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, have fun burning things down. See ya.